NASA is in big trouble. Its International Space Station is scheduled for retirement in 2030, so the National Agency is looking for alternatives in the private sector. Accordingly, a number of contracts have been signed through the Space Act Agreement to develop commercial space stations. But perhaps due to haste, NASA did not choose partners carefully, leading to wasting time and money on unsustainable projects. You know what I mean? Well, I'm referring to a $130 million contract from NASA for design work on the Orbital Reef Space Station led by Blue Origin and Sierra Space. However, the project is showing collapse as the two companies no longer want to cooperate. And then, to add insult to injury, China announced it would double the size of its Tiangong Space Station, providing an alternative to the ISS. But amid that dark context, there has emerged a new player in the commercial space station game a perfect partnership that promises to save NASA. They are VAST and SpaceX. Under the Space Act Agreement, the couple aims to establish the world's first privately owned outpost and beyond. All this and more in today's episode of TechMap. This is Haven 1, a habitation module designed by aerospace newcomers VAST, which is considered the world's first commercial space station. This free-flying module will be launched by SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9, scheduled for no earlier than August 2025. Haven 1 will initially act as an independent crewed space station prior to being connected as a module to a larger vast space station currently in development. The module is 10.1 meters long and 3.8 meters in diameter, meaning it is sized to fit the standard Falcon 9 payload fairing. The 14-ton module will provide 70 cubic meters of pressurized volume, and its four solar arrays will generate 15 kilowatts of power. This delivery mission is estimated to be a challenge for Falcon 9, as Haven 1 is one of the heaviest payloads deployed by the vehicle and its position in LEO will be slightly higher than that of the ISS about 310 miles above the surface. However, that is not a big problem for SpaceX as well as the vast development team. Over the operational years, Falcon 9 has built for itself an impressive profile, including completing 270 missions by far, smashing records many times, and being trusted by a massive national agency like NASA. That's why VAST chose the Falcon 9 not only to lift the heavy module, but also to serve the logistics of operating a rudimentary space station. Indeed, SpaceX is providing VAST with the use of a Crew Dragon space capsule, along with the SpaceX flight suits and even astronaut training for VAST customers. All serve for VAST-1, the first human spaceflight mission to Haven-1 on a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Atop on the workhorse rocket, the vehicle and its four-person crew will be sent to and dock with Haven-1 for up to 30 days while orbiting Earth. So, this leads to a question. How will a crew of four people live for up to 30 days while its own Haven is not a self-sustaining habitat? Yeah, it's where Dragon comes in. The module will pair with the capabilities that SpaceX has already developed for Crew Dragon. The spacecraft will be at least partially responsible for providing life support systems to the Haven module, in addition to water and, quote, other services needed to keep humans alive. Besides, the Dragon also adds another 10 cubic meters of pressurized volume to the station and a couple extra windows. Well, that's all very cool and practical, but... The really exciting thing here is VAST's mission for the future. After Haven 1 and other possible Falcon 9 class modules, VAST is planning to launch in 2028, a bigger space station module relaying on SpaceX fully reusable Starship Super Heavy Lift rocket. This is an important step towards the development of a 100 meter long spinning stick space station that provides various gravitational environments, including Earth, Mars, Moon, and asteroid gravities. The spinning stick station will accommodate up to 40 astronauts and is scheduled to be launched in the late 2030s. In a longer-term project, VAST aims to operate dozens of artificial gravity and zero-gravity space stations across our solar system. More astonishingly, this insane invention will be formed by seven Starship class modules. Starship is well known by the title of the largest rocket ever built in the world, owning top-notch competitive advantages such as modern design high cadence launch, and inexpensive cost per launch. 
Clearly, this gigantic rocket will be a perfect choice for vast aiming at the goal of supporting billions of people living in space across the entire solar system. By taking advantage of resources taken from distant asteroids, moons, and planets, humans will partly solve problems related to natural resource shortages and climate change taking place on Earth. Vast strategy, compared to those of its competitors, is splendid in its simplicity. Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, Voyager Space, and Axiom want to build multi-module commercial space stations from the very start. The Russians took 10 years, from 1986 to 1996, to fully deploy and assemble the Meyer Space Station. The International Space Station began its assembly in 1998, and even though the orbiting laboratory was officially completed in 2011, it is still very much a work in progress. The Chinese Tiangong started assemblage in 2021 and currently consists of three modules with more on the way. History suggests assembling a multi-module commercial space station could take years, of course, with the support of versatile launch vehicles such as the Falcon 9 and Starship could shorten that time. For Elon Musk, long-term cooperation on this mission will greatly support him in his Mars colonization dream. Imagine how convenient everything would be if there were outposts in space to resupply Mars with humans and materials. Not only will this partnership benefit both private companies, but it also promises to foster innovation and advance the future of human spaceflight. This is one of NASA's ultimate goals when introducing the Space Act agreements. Referring to Starship's potential to become a new type of space station in LEO, Chad Anderson, founder and managing capital of Space Capital, during a session of the Financial Times Investing in Space Conference on June 2023 said, SpaceX's Starship is so large and also so cost-effective that it could be a station itself. An example he gave was a hotel company outfitting the interior of Starship for customers. They could launch a group of people and stay however long they want with the accommodations they want, and they could do it all for less than the cost of one seat to the space station today. In the past, Proposals for space stations were based on the external fuel tank, which would have been challenging to construct. However, the steel construction of SpaceX Starships offers ease in welding, cutting, and modifying, making the construction process more manageable. As a result, the development of space stations becomes more feasible and cost-effective. With plenty of volume available within the Starships, supplies can be stacked around the hull, which provides additional radiation protection. Even with one meter thick shielding, a 900 cubic meter volume would retain 90% of its interior space, offering substantial living and working areas for the astronauts. One of the remarkable advantages of SpaceX Starships is their affordability. With a price tag of approximately $2 million per Starship, a fleet of 50 Starships would only cost $1 billion. Such a space station with a volume 100 times greater than the ISS could accommodate up to 350 people based on the standards set by the ISS. It is worth noting that the ISS was originally designed to support seven people but temporarily hosted a record of nine individuals during a handover in 2009. With that in mind, a space station based on giant starships with a capacity of 450 occupants during surges would be super cost effective with an estimated total cost of around $2 billion. And the result? Space travel will no longer remain exclusive to billionaires. Instead, it will become an opportunity accessible to folks from all walks of life. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.